Señor Presidente, señor Secretario. Mr. President, Secretary General, sir, ladies and gentlemen, heads of state of government, permanent representatives, delegates, I wish to bring you a special greeting from the noble people of Honduras. Today, we, the people of Honduras, wish to express our solidarity with our brothers in Mexico faced with the recent tragedy that has struck them. And I repeat our commitment to support you with what we can, as we are already doing. Nearly four years ago, I spoke for the first time before this assembly. Four years down the road, I look back at how Honduras has faced the major challenges in our path. And today, I wish to share with you, with the world, how it is that we are building the new Honduras. Four years ago, transnational organized crime meant that Honduras was uh, a country with high levels of violence, like very few countries in the world. At the end of 2013, we had 75 murders per 100,000 inhabitants. And uh, 400, uh, four years before that, um, nearly 90 per 100,000 uh, inhabitants. But in 2013, with 75 murders per 100,000 inhabitants, we had reduced this number by about 30 points. In its recent report of the um, Global Peace Institute, looking at uh, the index, we rose uh, 16 steps here. We managed also to reduce our fiscal deficit from 8% to 3% of our GNP. We have restored our economy. This year it will grow by 4.1%. Our exports have increased. Investment is rising. Our international reserves are enough for nearly six months of imports. Our national currency has been revalued, and our rate of inflation is very moderate. Undertakings uh, termed as at risk have uh, increased our credit rating. And today this is the best in our history. This year, together with Guatemala, we have started the implementation of the first Customs Union of the Americas. Today, Honduras and Guatemala have an area where there is free circulation of goods, services, and people. Moreover, we are already uh, negotiating with our brothers of El Salvador and Nicaragua, joining our uh, customs union. And in the future, we hope uh, to see Costa Rica and uh, Panama joining us so that we will become the seventh largest economy in Latin America. However, El Salvador, Nicaragua, and Honduras have also started uh, the development plan of the uh, Fonseca Gulf with the support of the Central American uh, Bank for Economic Integration. This will enable us to set up a true pole of economic, uh, tourist, and social development in the Pacific, which will be the first special economic zone of the region. What was previously an area where conflict arose amongst nations has become a focal point of development for the good of our three countries. I would also like to tell you that Honduras is about to uh, take a vast leap when it comes to attracting investment. I'm referring here to implementing employment areas where both national and international investment will have four dimensions of institutional guarantees, legal, economic, administrative, and political. These will be based in the models of good practices 
which are followed uh, by undertakings and workers in wealthy countries. Thus, under the Honduran flag, the very productive labor force in my country will have the best opportunities in the world. And together with the Honduras 2020 Program for Economic Development, we expect to create at least 600,000 jobs in the next five years for our people. Over the last four years, we have invested about uh, 2,000 a million dollars in infrastructure so that Honduras is the a great uh, logistical center of Central America with uh, uh, motorways, uh, investments in um, ports, airports, um, an inter-ocean roadway, and a customs model of the first generation. This will enable the region of Central America to have a very special logistical system. We're also working on transparency and fighting corruption. We are the only country in the world which has signed an agreement with um, international transparency, Transparency International, to work in five sectors of a public administration. We have made considerable progress in implementing international standards in acquisitions in construction and infrastructure building with the cost initiative. We have reformed our national uh, police. We are creating a new uh, police institution. We are strengthening our uh, ministries. We are creating anti-corruption uh, courts. We have entered into a, a convention uh, with the OEA to establish a mission um, uh, of support against corruption and impunity. We are also improving the purchase of medicines for our national health system. In line with our commitments to the SDGs, and in particular SDG 1, our administration has implemented the most ambitious social program to protect our most vulnerable citizens. This program we have called Vida Mejor, a better life, in order to provide dignity to those of our fellow countrymen who suffer from uh, extreme poverty. And now about two and a half million of participants are involved, moving towards a better life. I also wish to tell you that we fully support the project to reform the United Nations promoted by the Secretary General in order to achieve the uh, objectives of the 2030 Agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, heads of state and government, our countries are facing major challenges arising from climate change, uh, from the nuclear threat, from poverty, organized international crime, terrorism, racism, intolerance, and uh, violations of human rights. These are challenges that we have to analyze and we have to face determinedly with absolute commitment. Climate change has shown itself to be merciless with uh, the tragic series of uh, tropical hurricanes and storms. I wish to express our solidarity and our condolences to our brothers and sisters affected by the destructive force of uh, uh, these recent hurricanes. And we wish to help these countries in the Caribbean which have suffered so much destruction. Honduras will be present there for our brothers. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the nuclear arms race is also very serious for mankind, and as is the threat of using nuclear weapons. Honduras rejects the recent uh, tests of nuclear weapons. We support the resolutions adopted by the Security Council and uh, those 
uh, channels which wish to see the diplomatic resolution of tension and threats to a global peace. Ladies and gentlemen, permanent representatives, poverty has a priority place on the agendas of our countries as de developing countries. We have to overcome uh, those structural conditions which exclude large sectors of our society from access to goods and services which would enable them to live in a dignified fashion and provide them with opportunities for uh, the uh, comprehensive development of people's families, of our communities, of our countries. Poverty uh, has effects in its environment. It leads to internal migration and international migration with serious social consequences, the breaking up of families and separations. It generates a lack of security and violence. It causes much suffer suffering. We have to fight poverty with networks of social protection, with access to basic services of health and education, with inclusive uh, uh, credit that is uh, sound and which can provide technical assistance to avoid people being deprived of essential goods for life. However, Mr. President, ladies and gentlemen delegates, we as developing countries are up against the problem of the uh, criterion that developed countries have adopted to allocate cooperation resources. What am I talking about? Just think, the criterion which is used is that of classification by means of the national income of countries in three levels, high, medium, and low. The premise is that most help will go to low-income countries and that middle and high-income companies have a greater domestic ability to overcome poverty. Because of this, the countries which are most affected, harmed when it comes to access to international aid, are countries which are in the middle income category, such as Honduras. And Mr. President, delegates, our country is committed to defend and promote human rights. For Honduras, the respect of human beings is a state policy. We recently established a Secretariat for Human Rights. We have institution uh, set up as an institution a mechanism for dialogue between the government and uh, human rights organizations. And we have opened, uh, it's actually already up and running, the office of the uh, UN High uh, Commissioner for uh, Human Rights. Ladies and gentlemen, It is very sad for anybody to have to leave his or her family, customs, land of birth. Migrants, the migrants of our days, are our new martyrs. They're the new heroes who fight abroad, fight adversity, work untiringly, carry out the most difficult work in the hardest conditions and still press on. They're able to contribute to, to the countries where they are with their talents, their culture, their dedication, their efforts, and paying taxes. <laughs> Our compatriots from Honduras who have migrated when they face difficult circumstances in our country, make us feel proud, proud of their endeavors. And we therefore demand that they be treated in a dignified fashion, commensurate with the contribution they make to those countries where they have arrived to build a new life. Honduras is working very hard to improve the living conditions of our citizens so that they do not have to leave their countries, leave their countries and seek opportunities elsewhere. However, we are also working 
with our brother countries in Latin America to ensure that there be a recognition of the contribution of uh, those uh, who, for natural causes, are protected uh, in a temporary way, with temporary status, and uh, for those children who one day will leave with their country, their parents, and grow up far from uh, their motherland and start to th dream of something else. We don't wish these uh, uh, dreams to be dispelled. We want the dreamers to be able to imagine a better world, to be fueled by hope so that their desires may be realized. We are working for this new world. That's what we've been doing these last four years. This is why we're here. We believe that our action will enable us to see a new sun rise on a new day. Nothing, nobody, can stop us from dreaming. We will not cease to dream. Together, we can build a better world for our children and for the children of our children. Thank you very much.